Good morning, James. Good morning. Well, I'm sorry, what was the witness's name? Jared Carraboy. Carraboy? Yes. Oh, I have a list up there somewhere. Thanks, I found it. Mr. Paraboy, yes. welcome. If you'll come forward to be sworn as a witness, once you come through the gate, if you'll face me and raise your right hand, please. That's perfect. Do you swear or affirm any testimony you give in this proceeding? Will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. All right, if you'll come around this way, the bailiff will show you to the ramp that leads up to the witness chair. Please watch your step. When you get to that chair at the end of the ramp, go ahead and have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. The microphone in front of you is fully adjustable. You let me know when you're ready, and then I will allow um, Ms. O'Hara to proceed. You may as well, Ruby. All right, Ms. O'Hara, you may proceed. Good morning, sir. Can you please um, tell us your full name and spell your last name for the record? It's Jared Paragulis, J-A-R-E-D-P-E-R-E-G-O-Y. Mr. Paraboy, um, we're here to discuss some events that occurred back in July of 2003. At that time, were you living in the Tampa Bay area? Yes, I was living in Pinellas Park. Okay. And sometime in July of 2003, did you travel to Tampa to go to a bar called 2606 here in Tampa, Florida? Yes. And from your recollection, was that in Hillsborough County? Yes. Okay. Do you remember the exact date in July of 2003? 2003 that you went there? Not the exact date. It was in the first two weeks of, of July. July. Yeah. Okay. And do you recall um, the reason that you went there? Uh, I had just uh, decided to go back to college. So and were I you was, there to celebrate? Yeah, I was excited and I was, you know, out to celebrate. All right. Did you go to that bar with anyone else? No, I was by myself. So that evening, you traveled alone from Pinellas County to Hills Road to uh, go to 2606? Yes. All right. Do you recall approximately what time you arrived there that day? It was around midnight. All right. And while you were at 2606, did you come into contact with someone that you now know as Stephen Lorenzo, the defendant in this case? Yes. All right. And do you see him here in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you point him out and identify something that he's wearing? Uh, he's wearing the red right there, the defendant's. Uh, the, record the, the record shall so reflect. Sir, can you um, tell the court how you went about coming into contact with this defendant at 2606 that evening? Uh, I was there having a couple drinks and we just started talking. Okay. And had you ever met um, the defendant prior to this date? No. All right. Did the two of you just kind of engage in casual conversation that people often do at bars and nightclubs? Yes. All right. Do you recall anything that you all discussed? Uh, we talked about houses and cars and just general conversation. All right. And at some point that evening, did um, you and the defendant decide to leave and relocate somewhere else? Yes. All right. Tell us um, approximately what time you all decided to leave. It was at around last call. And that would have been uh, what time? 2.30, 2.45. All right, and at this point in the evening, do you recall how many drinks you had consumed? About two to three. All right, and do you recall what you were drinking? Uh, Bud Light. All right. So what was the plan um, after leaving the bar that evening? Uh, we were planning to go up to his place and just continue talking. Did um, the defendant invite you over to his home? Yes. Okay. Prior to leaving the bar that evening, was there any discussion between you and the defendant about engaging in any type of sexual activity or sexual intercourse? No, not at all. So that was not the plan upon leaving nope. the bar? How did you get from 2606 to the defendant's house? Uh, I drove. Did the defendant also have um, a vehicle? Yes. All right, did you follow him or did he give you directions? I followed him. Okay. How long approximately did it take to get from 2606? Oh. To the home. Five, ten minutes. Okay. Tell us um, what happens when you guys get inside the house. What did you guys do? Uh, we sat in the living room and we were talking. Um, you know, 
offered me to eat a couple drinks. Okay, and um, while you were there, did you see anyone else inside the home other than yourself and Mr. No. Lando? Okay, you stated that the defendant offered you a drink. Do you recall what he offered you? It was wine. All right, and did you um, accept the wine? Yes. All right. Now, um, when the defendant went to get that um, drink for you, did he pour it into a glass in your presence? No. Okay. Where were you um, when the defendant was making the drink? Uh, I was in the living room. And where do you um, recall that the defendant went to pour the drink? Kitchen. So after he hands it to you, did you drink the wine? Yes. Okay. And um, how did it taste? Anything unusual about the taste? Uh, it was salty. Okay. It tasted off. So tell us what's going on at this point. You're drinking the wine. It tastes salty. We're just talking, and all of a sudden I started feeling sick. You started feeling sick? What exactly were you feeling? Uh, nauseous. Okay. Um, this one was pretty bad. And what did you do at that point once you started to feel nauseous? Um, I went to the bathroom and I threw up. You threw up? Yep. Okay. And when you went to the bathroom this time, did the defendant also go in the bathroom with you? No. He stayed outside? Yes. Okay. And after throwing up, did you go back into the living room? Yes. Was the defendant there? Yes. All right. Um, what happens at that point? All right. Now I'm gonna back up for just a second. When you started to feel ill, did you um, do you recall how many glasses of wine you had had at that point that were given to you by the defendant? It was uh, three, I do believe. Three. So yes. How long? Um, how much time had passed between you consuming the first glass until you started to feel sick? Uh, I'd say probably about ten. Now, you stated that you went back into the living room after you had thrown up in the bathroom and um, the defendant made a comment that you didn't look too well. Did you um, start to feel better or did your condition worsen at that point? I was still feeling pretty bad. All right. Same, same symptoms, yes. disoriented, nauseous? Yes. Okay. Um, so what happens at this point? Uh, I went and laid down on the bed and was asking for some water. Okay. And this bed that you laid down on, where was that bed located within the home? It was off the living room near the uh, bathroom. I do believe it was the master bedroom. Okay. So you believe that was um, the defendant's bedroom? Yes. All right. So you lay down in the bed. What happened at that point? Uh, he came in with what looked like a Gatorade bottle and was giving me cap fulls, and it was extremely salty. And, um, I continued to try to spit it out and kept asking for water. Okay, you say that you kept asking for water, but the defendant was giving you capsules of something in a Gatorade bottle. At any point, did he bring you the water that you had asked for? No. I'm sorry. No. no. Okay, and you stated that this um, also tasted salty, which is yes. how you described the wine previously, correct? Yes. Okay, so what happens at this point after you've been um, fed capsules of a liquid in a Gatorade bottle? I got sick again, got even sicker, and got up <laughs> to go to the bathroom and throw up again. All right, were you able to um, walk to the bathroom with any difficulties or? Uh, I was difficulties? stumbling, wasn't you know, completely stable. All right, and now this bathroom that you went to, um, is this within the master bedroom or did you have to actually walk out of the master into like a hallway area? I had to walk uh, outside the master bedroom. Okay, and when you went to that bathroom, um, did the defendant follow you this time? Yes. All right, tell us what happens once you and the defendant are inside this bathroom. Uh, I was as I was vomiting, I heard what sounded like a zip tie um, clothing and felt pressure on my neck. Okay, and tell us exactly um, where you are in the bathroom. Are you like kneeling and, and vomiting to the my, toilet? On my knees vomiting. All right, and you feel something? Around my neck. All right, what did you do at this point when you felt um, what you described as a zip tie being placed around your neck? I reached up to, you know, see if I could grab it release it and uh, started trying to fight back. Okay. Um, were you able to get any fingers down into that zip tie or was it too tight? It was too tight. Okay. And you stated that you at this point are trying to fight. Um, what, what did you do exactly? I literally reached back and grabbed for his testicles and tried to squeeze them as hard as I could. All right. What happens at that point? I passed out. 
Okay, so would it be fair to state that you were not really able to no. um, do much fighting at this point? No. Okay. So you passed out. Um, do you have any idea what time it was when you passed out? No. Okay. After passing out, do you eventually regain consciousness? Yes. All right, now where are you when you wake up? Uh, on the floor next to the bed. Okay, back in the master bedroom yes. we previously discussed. Any idea how much time passed between passing out and waking up? No. Right. Now, um, when you wake up, are you laying face down on your back, side? I'm on my back. Okay, and where's the defendant? Uh, he was on his knees behind my shoulders. Were you fully clothed at this time when you woke up? No. What um, articles of clothing were on your body or off your body? My pants were around my ankles and that was it. Okay. What about the defendant? Did he have his clothes on? Yes. When you um, wake up, does the defendant say anything to you? No, not really. Okay. Tell us what you felt upon um, waking up. Well, I felt like I had to go to the bathroom really bad. A lot of pressure in my rectal area. All right. And when you felt that pressure, what did you do? Uh, I wiggled and reached down and ended up removing a very large butt plug. Okay. And were you able to actually get up into yes. the bathroom? Tell us um, what you observed when you got to the bathroom. Uh, I was bleeding, a lot of blood in the rectal area, and I had two lines going all the way around my neck that were bleeding. Okay. And did you have any other um, cuts, scratches, bruises that you observed? Not at that time. I did have bruising all up and down my back, across my ribs, all over my legs. And when did you notice this? Uh, when I got home. Okay, so later that same yes. day? Yes. Right. Um, so once you go into the bathroom, you realize, you know, what had occurred, and you realize that you have these injuries, what did you do next? Uh, I got very angry and started yelling and cussing and screaming. Okay, and did you direct that towards the defendant? Yes. So had you already um, come out of the bathroom when this is uh, going on? Yes. All right, what did you say to um, the defendant, if you recall? <laughs> I don't remember exactly, but it was not nice. Okay, and did he say anything in response to you? Uh, he was saying something about having rough sex. Okay, um, what did you do at this point? I got my clothes and got in my car and left. Now, let me ask you, sir, um, when you woke up and you, um, you previously testified you were on the ground on your back, was that zip tie still around your neck? No. Do you have any idea how it was removed from you? No. Okay. Now, you say that you um, got your stuff and you left the defendant's home. Did you immediately call law enforcement to uh, report this incident? No. Why not? Uh, I was disorientated. I was uh, confused. I just didn't know what the hell was happening. Okay, at some point in time, did you eventually report this incident to law enforcement? Yes. And when was that? It was uh, when he actually got arrested. Okay, so how did you come to find out the defendant was arrested? A friend of mine saw the news, um, saw the news about it and told me about it, and I ended up looking it up on the internet. Okay, and after seeing that, you felt that it was important to report this? Yes. Okay, um, the entire time you were at the defendant's home back in July of 2003, was there anyone else that you saw inside that home other than yourself and the defendant? No. Okay, and sir, at any point during your interaction with the defendant, did you consent to any type of sexual activity no. with him? Did you consent to having... Um, a zip tie placed around your neck? No. Did you consent to being penetrated with um, the large plug that you previously testified no. about? Can I have a moment, Judge? Absolutely. Sir, I don't have any more questions for you. Um, Mr. Lorenzo may have some questions. Thank you. Mr. Lorenzo, do you have any questions of this witness? Yes, I sure do. Hello, Mr. Perkins. Perkins, go. So you said that you met the defendant at the bar and you were talking houses and uh, and then you went back to the defendant's home willingly. You did not go back to the defendant's home to have sex? No. Then why would you go back to the defendant's home since that's the only reason why the defendant would have 
anybody come back to their home. Because we were having good conversation and having good talk. Did you have financial problems back then? No. Did the defendant, did I, I should say that I make it easier for you. Did you and I agree to pay you a hundred dollars because your money was low, so to do a bondage scene? Nope. Never. Did you accept a hundred dollars when you left? Nope. Did you come to do the, the defendant and you do drugs together, crystal meth together? Nope. I have no any redirect from the state? Yeah. May this witness be released by the state? He may. And released by the defense? Yes. Thank you, sir. You may step down. You may be released as a witness at this time. I'll ask the state to please call your next witness. Thank you, Honorable State. Call Charles Masucci.